I realized that since I moved to a new office, I never actually showed you the new studio setup. Let's fix that. But there's also another thing I'd like to talk about with you. Before we start, I have something for you. If you want to learn more about how to design a piece of software from scratch, I have a free guide for you, available at arian.co slash design guide. It contains the seven steps I take whenever I design new software, and hopefully it helps you avoid some of the mistakes that I made in the past. So, iron.code slash design guide. The link is also in the description of this video. When I started this channel, it was basically me with a camera in my bedroom, or in my daughter's bedroom, actually, just posting some videos here on YouTube. But now it's quite different. I have a dedicated recording space, to actually. I've done a lot of upgrades to the technical setup, cameras, lights, microphones, etc. And I'm no longer doing this alone. There's a small team now that's helping me with Arian Codes. It's becoming a proper business. Before a business starts hiring people, it's important to define what your values and beliefs are. Because if you build up a team, your team members need to be on board with that. What's even more important with a content-driven business like Arian Codes is that you need to know what the brand stands for, so that if you ever decide to enroll in my online course, for example, you know who you're dealing with. I've spent quite some time thinking about what Arian Codes should actually stand for, what the culture is of Arian Codes. I think I've figured it out, but before I dive in deeper, let's take a look at the studio. I'm going to get started in the coding live stream room. So what you see here behind me, that's all acoustic treatment. So the room actually doesn't sound like crap. There's also a pretty huge light over there, which is nice. That's uh, going to make me actually visible in the live streams. And let's also take a look at my live streaming setup. So what I use for all my coding and live streaming is an iMac 24 inch. That's the one you see here behind me. So I have this set up with VS Code and the things that I like to use. I have also an Elgato Stream Deck. So this is mainly useful for controlling tools like OBS. I'm still playing around with trying to use it with VS Code as well. Maybe there are some like, I don't know, useful shortcuts that I can use it with. So here you see an audio recorder. This is the Sound Devices Mix Pre 6, which is also really useful. So I use that to actually record this microphone and that's the Sennheiser MKH4. 16. I think Marcus Brownlee also used this for all his videos. So this is the keyboard that I use. It's a Keychrom K2 mechanical keyboard. It's in Mac configuration at the moment. You can also put it in Windows configuration. I still use this trackpad. I think this actually really nice works really well with the Mac. But next to that, I do like to use this mouse. This is the Logitech. MX Master 3. I really hate the Mac Magic Mouse. It just hurts my hands to work with that. So I prefer to use a mouse like this. And then on my Mac, normally when I do a recording, I have the VS Code editor open like I have now. And then I just record the screen. And that actually works really well and gives me pretty good quality. For live streaming, I use OBS. And then I control it with the Stream Deck so I can switch between scenes. What do I use in terms of lighting? This is actually a pretty classic so-called three light setup. So we have the main light here, which is really this huge dome here that gives a lot of really soft light, which is really great. This is the secondary light that I use. That's the Elgato key light. So that hits the other side of my face. So that gives a nice balance. And then I still have what we have here, a so-called rim light or hair light and well, that shines on my beautiful gray hair, which is also, of course, really important. But mostly, it actually separates you a bit from the background. So that's really useful. That's the three-point light setup. And then I have a couple of extra lights, like uh, this one. It gives a nice blue color on the wall, which I like. And then I have a couple of these more decorative lights to spice up the scene a bit. So normally here, there is supposed to be a camera but of course I'm currently recording with the camera so I can show it to you but this is the Sony a7 IV that I use and I normally use a 24 to 70 millimeter zoom lens currently I'm actually using a 20 millimeter lens which I think is better for this kind of vlogging style setup so as you can see I use quite a lot of equipment also pretty expensive stuff actually it's not really needed for YouTube content but 
I do like it. I like to play around with cameras and lenses and microphones and lights, etc. Even though it's expensive, I do think it helps with the production quality and you still see that in the end, even if it's just a minor thing. So this is our office. It's, uh, as you can see, decorated really well. This is where I normally sit and try to do some work. This desk is normally not this empty. Normally it's actually a really big mess. So uh, I try to clean it up for you so you have the illusion that I'm actually an organized person. And then here we have Victoria, who is uh, my uh, uh, recent addition to the team. Victoria does all the marketing. Hi, Victoria. Hi, everyone. And let's continue. So here we have a couch where we actually never sit. That's why it looks so nice and clean. But uh, the idea is that we can sit here and uh, talk about stuff. The reason that Arian Codes exists is that it helps both people and businesses write better software. We want to make building software more predictable and have better outcomes by providing the right educational material, like here on YouTube or in my online courses, by helping companies improve their processes, and in the future, maybe even developing software products on our own. Key thing for me is education and giving. I want to build a company that doesn't optimize for profit, but for positive impact. But what does it mean, practically speaking? Well, first, I spend serious money on the free content we produce so that it really helps a lot of people. Two, I give a lot of freedom to our team members and help them grow personally and professionally. And C, 10% of our profit goes to charity. How do we pick these charities? Actually, I'm going to let my two daughters decide, also as a way to teach them how to give. But I'll probably let them pick from a list of charities that are effective. I'm still setting this up, but early next year, I'm going to publish on my website which charities my daughters picked for this year. There's a bit more to talk about, but let's first take a look at this talking head setup. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, give it a like. It helps other people on YouTube find my content more easily. So I've set up this room a bit differently. There's basically two areas here where I can film. We have the main talking head setup. That's the desk that I'm sitting at right now. And in the back, there's also a couch where I'll just show you in a minute where I can also sit and do my recordings. So that gives some variety in uh, the things that I film, which uh, I really like. The microphone I use here is slightly different. That's this one, that's the MKH50. It's also Sennheiser. This is more suitable for indoor recording than the MKH416 that I showed you in the other room. So how is this all connected? I have the microphone here that's attached via an arm to the tripod. And on the tripod, I have a Sony a7 IV camera. There's a monitor on top. I use a teleprompter where I mainly just write my talking points, things that I want to talk about during the video. There's also another audio recorder that's attached to the bottom of this. So this is basically one thing that I can move as a whole. So as you can see, when you look back here, well, it's a bit of a cable mess, but as you can see, there's actually just one single cable that's going from the tripod to, um, to the wall socket. So I can just take this whole thing and then move it all the way over there near the couch so I can also record there. And then I also have this light, which is here actually on a rolling stand. So I can just take this light and then I just push it up like this over to the couch. And now it's lighting this scene. And now I can just record here. I also have a very nice little cushion here. This is an official Iron Coats cushion. It's actually a gift by my wife, but it's really, really soft. So what I do here for recording is that I have this whole setup, but I have just mounted, I just did this recently, I set up a separate camera to do a second angle recording. So you might see that pop up from time to time in my recordings. I also spent some time setting everything up using smart apps so that with my Google Home, I can basically switch on and off all the lights and the cameras with one click. So that's really, really useful. So for me, because these are basically fixed setup, I can just get started recording really quickly. Just switch on the lights and I'm ready to go. So another thing you might've noticed is that I have this really cool light setup here. That's the uh, Nano Leaf Lines uh, LED light, by the way, if you're interested in what this is. Uh, this is actually also really cool, except it's a bit problematic because 
when I record this, I get flickering in my recordings. And the reason was that I was recording at 24 frames per second, which is like the standard setting of the camera. So what I did in uh, my recent videos that I switched to 25 frames per second. So you might say, what, 25 frames per second? Are you out of your mind? Well, actually it's a pretty minor difference. Uh, the main difference is that 25 frames per second is PAL and 24 frames is NTSC. And with 25 frames per second, since here in Europe we're at 50 Hertz, you don't get these lights flickering so much, so that actually really helps. The things I've mentioned in this video, together with a few other things, form the Arion Codes culture. I've written this down and published it on my website. If you want to read it, go to arion.codes culture. The reason I wrote it down and published it is that first, it's clear and open for everybody how we operate, so you know who you're dealing with. Second, you might find it useful if you're setting up your own company, for example, or if you're currently thinking about your company's culture and you'd like to get some ideas. And finally, publishing the culture holds us accountable. If you notice our actions are not in line with what we stand for, I want to hear it so we can improve things. Anyway, I just want to give you an idea of how I approach things with Iron Codes. Let me know what you think in the comments. Does your company have a culture? And if so, what do you like or dislike about it? A sort of related topic is how companies look at different developer roles and how you can become a senior developer. If you want to learn more, check out this video next. Thanks for watching and take care.